I'm going to give you three seconds to answer the next series of Catholic pop quiz questions. Each question you get right, you get one million completely unredeemable points. Excited? Ready to go? Let's get started. In 1577, Teresa of Avila wrote a book called The Interior Castle, acclaimed as one of the most insightful mystical works reflecting on the inner work of God in our prayer and spiritual lives. To whom was it written? If you said discalced Carmelite nuns, you win a million completely unredeemable points! Woo! Next question. In 1859, St. John Bosco founded Society of the St. Francis de Sales, a ministry that was devoted to serving who? If you said troubled boys, you are correct! Another million completely unredeemable points! Finish this quote from Galatians 2.9. James and Cephas and John, who were reputed to be pillars, gave me, Paul, and Barnabas their right hands in partnership that we should go to. If you said to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised, you're so smart! Another million unredeemable points! Teresa of Calcutta was sitting on a train when she heard God speak to her heart that she was to go serve who? You said, poorest of the poor, you're a smart one, another million completely every two of the If you answered all four of those questions correctly, you now have four million completely worthless points. Good for you. But I'll be super impressed if you can tell me what is the common thread that unites all of those answers. The common thread that if you were to apply the same principle to your ministry, your ministry would never be the same again. If you said that each of these saints had taken the apostolate to which God had called them and identified a target market, you're correct. Fun thing is, is that these were not the only saints who were called by God to serve a particular group of people. Think Jose Maria Escriva, who founded Opus Dei in order to minister to working lay people. You have St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, who essentially founded the parochial education system to focus her efforts in taking care of and educating children. Even Jesus focused the majority of his earthly ministry on a particular group of people, the Jews. <laughs> yes, there are a couple exceptions, but it wasn't until after the Passion when literally the curtain is ripped open and the Holy Spirit rushes upon the whole world that Jesus' ministry was expanded to the Gentiles. He focused on the Jews. All right, all right, I get it, I get it. A lot of the saints and even Jesus himself identified particular groups that they were called to serve by God. Got it, got it, point made. Because knowing this principle and applying it to your ministry is a game changer. These past few weeks, we have been going over the book Built to Last, which is a secular research book that focuses on, on 18 visionary companies. And something really sticks out to me about these companies. They are all leaders in their industries, leaders in steel, oil, retail, pharmaceuticals. They're not leaders in multiple industries, one industry. And in contrast, the Built to Last researchers discovered that the comparison companies often dabbled and experimented in a variety of different industries. They brought up the example of one pharmaceutical company, which they said did the following. They launched a frenetic acquisition binge, purchasing 14 companies in four years and diversifying into such areas as farm products, women's toiletries, shaving products, and paint pigments. There is a reason that comparison company isn't the best in the world. And it's the same reason that so many lay ministers feel overworked and overwhelmed and struggle because we feel so ineffective in our ministries. It's because we haven't identified our target markets. Whoa, 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 Natalie, I'm sorry. 
I'm not comfortable using the word target market for ministry. We're not marketing anything. I know that kind of language can make some ministers feel uncomfortable. Let's define the word. Your target market is the group of people you serve. That's the definition. A target market is the group of people you serve. Just like Teresa of Calcutta serving the poorest of the poor, John Bosco serving troubled boys, Jesus serving the Jews. We have tradition in the Catholic Church in which God demonstrably calls people to serve a particular group of people. Your target market, you must identify your target market in order to identify and build the foundation for your ministry. It's one of the essential components of identifying your core ideology. Why is this so important? Okay, question, are you a billionaire? The top companies in the world stick to one industry and think about it, they have billions of dollars of revenue that they generate every year and they usually have thousands of staff at their disposal and they are still only targeting one particular industry. As a leader, you have a responsibility to identify your resources, no matter how big or small, and target them in order to use them in the most efficient way possible to fulfill the mission that God has put on your heart. That's a good reason. Reason number two, identifying your target market means that you can make really practical decisions for the direction of your ministry. An example. In my travels to the something 20 something states in this past year, I became familiar with an altar society group that wanted to recruit younger members. Most of their folks are these adorable, sweet 80 year old ladies who are really starting to struggle in cleaning the church. They need young, strong people to help them. However, their meetings are currently held at 11 a.m. on Tuesday mornings, which is quite possibly the worst time to be able to recruit young people who are either in school or at work. They want to be able to recruit younger members. They need to be able to identify their needs of their target market and when that target market is available and then rearrange the schedule of their ministry so that they can actually be able to recruit the people that they need in order to fulfill their mission. These are practical applications for knowing your target market. So when you know the various things that make them tick, you can actually meet them where they are and be more effective. All right, so how do you define your target market? That's such a good question and that I'm going to take a whole nother video to answer it next week. I know, what a tease, what a tease. Question. What do you think of identifying a target market for your ministry? What are the pros? Maybe what are some of the cons? Comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Like us on Facebook and don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I'll see you next week. God bless guys. Bye.